It's a great pleasure to speak with you today. I've titled my presentation, Enhancing Trust in Audit and Insurance, because I think this goes to the core of the IAASP's purpose. And this is what guides me in my role as chair. It's all about enhancing trust. I firmly believe that the profession at its best should drive greater confidence and trust in our economy and the functioning of our markets. And I think we could all agree now more than ever, our market, market participants need greater confidence in reported information and those that provide assurance. In my remarks, I wanna do three things. One, highlight the work that we as a board are doing to raise the bar on audit quality globally. Two, describe the greatest public interest challenges that we as a board are addressing right now. And three, urge all of your continued engagement with the IAASB's work. So how are we trying to enhance trust and confidence in markets through our audits? Well, you know, I'm an outcome driven person and I want you as a stakeholder community to hold us accountable. And recently I was asked this question, how do you as a standard setter know that you are successful? And for us, enhancing confidence. And I set out the following criteria. We should be judged by our willingness to tackle the very real challenges facing the professions and the standards that govern it. If we succeed, we, of course, the result will be auditors are able to attract a new generation of publicly interested professionals, and they will make a positive contribution to the global economy. And despite all the negativity that sometimes exists following high profile failures, I think right now more than ever, the profession's in a strong place backed by high quality standards to enhance the trust that should exist in its work. And we are starting from a really strong foundation. Most of the world has embraced the IAASB standards. Our standards are adopted in 130 countries around the world. And if you are, audit inspection findings suggest that there is improvement in audit quality. For example, in 2014, 47% of audit engagements inspected had at least one finding. In 2020, that was reduced to 34%. So there is progress at hand. But as our strategy recognizes, there is no time for complacency. For the IASB, for the IAASB, we have to remain laser focused on delivering on our strategy. And that is viewing all challenges through a strict public interest lens and remaining aligned with the needs of users of audited financial information and other assurance information. So we have three key, key strategic objectives. One is getting our work plan right. And that really places a greater emphasis on the emerging issues that have the most relevance to the users of reported information. Secondly, we want to deliver on that work plan through an increasingly agile and innovative process. Speed to delivery of our standards matters. The world can't wait forever for standard setters to deliver. And third, we want to have more intensive stakeholder engagement. We want our stakeholders to feel like we're willing as a board to meet them where they want to be met not just where our strict due process requires them to input into our standard setting. Despite the pandemic, we have not been deterred and have, improved, have produced on this objective. So next week, we will be finishing our last piece of a broad work program aimed at enhancing the IAASB's foundational standards. We expect to approve our standard, a group audit that greatly increases the accountability of the group engagements team role in the direction, supervision, and review of component auditor work. This standard builds off the recent overhaul of our auditor reporting standard, risk assessment standard, and the introduction of a greatly improved suite of revised quality management standards. Taken together, and once fully implemented, these standards should improve the quality and consistency of audit engagements throughout the world. And we will likely see the improvements 
over that result from these standards in the coming years. But our early evidence is that it is improving water quality is encouraging. For example, we just finished a post implementation review on our auditor reporting standards and users were universally supportive of the changes that we have made. So it comes to begs the question of how are our standards helping to improve the sustainability and trust of the profession? So one of the ways we're doing it is promoting consistent practice and auditor behavior. And you know, to do that, we're, we're prioritizing and strengthening our standards, for example, in auditor reporting, accounting estimates, risk identification and assessment, quality management, group audits. They, they all really focus on what behavioral elements will focus the auditor's attention on the right things and to improve a quality audit. Second thing, we're focused on quality management at both the firm and engagement levels. So I did mention that we just approved our suite of quality management standards uh, not so long ago. And those standards direct audit firms to improve the robustness of their monitoring and remediation, embed quality into the co corporate culture and focus at the tone at the top. This should all make a system that is not just a, a slight improvement on the existing quality control system, but in my mind, a step change improvement towards a more system, robust system of quality management that's iterative and no longer a just linear and compliance focused. Our standards today are much more risk-based in the approach and they reinforce the auditor's exercise of professional skepticism. And you know, in doing so, I think professional skepticism lies at the heart of water quality. The importance of professional skepticism is underscored by the increasing complexity of business and financial reporting, including the greater use of estimates, management judgment, and business model changes due to technological developments. So throughout our new standards, we really emphasize where professional skepticism should be um, applied. And fi finally, we are enhan enhancing transparency through more robust communications and auditor reporting. So that is you know, almost every standard. Obviously we have one auditor reported standard, but throughout every standard we talk about communication. And so our standards really talk about the vital interactions that have to take place throughout all stages of an audit. For example, our group audit standard that we are about to approve next week talks about enhanced communication between the group engagement team and component auditors, a real two-way communication effort at all times. Our auditor reported standards enhanced communicative value throughout the auditor report by key audit matters. We've updated the auditor's report related to going concern, the auditor's independence and auditor's responsibilities. So we see the areas of communication as a key focus, not just in the past, but going forward as we take on our new projects. With the completion of that robust package of fundamental standards, we've now turned our work plan to the most emerging issues, the most pressing challenges facing audit and assurance. And I put these in sort of different buckets. So fraud and going concern are the first of the two topics. And we're focused on fraud and going concern because recent corporate failures have highlighted public interest in our addressing those topics and what the appropriate role of an auditor and the role of an auditor communicating issues about fraud and going concern are to the users of reported information. On both projects, we're in the process of completing project proposals. We're completing, we should finalize our fraud project proposal at our December board meeting and our going concern project proposal at our March meeting. We plan on go, being ambitious in our approach on both projects, but following the evidence on both projects on what we can do to improve our standards, to ensure that users are getting what they need from audited information.
Secondly, we're going after the issue of complexity and we're doing it in a two pronged approach. First, we're drafting a separate standard for audits of less complex entities. That standard is meant to follow the principles of ICES, but also reflect the fact that our standards have grown more complex over time because the economy is going more complex that for a whole range of regulated entities, particularly those that are listed, uh, that regulators have, have demanded and required more requirements to be spelled out, many of which probably are not particularly relevant to the facts and circumstances of less complex entities. The standard is now out for public consultation. We urge everyone to participate. We wanna make sure we get it right. We wanna make sure that whatever results, it results in a high quality audit. And this process should, will play out and we will be driven by our responses to it. We also have a project called Addressing Complexity, Understandability, Scalability, and Proportionality, which is aimed at providing some guidance to us as we draft standards to remove needless complexity. I'm conscious that standard setters like to write in long sentences, we need to write more simply so people can understand our rules, that they could be translated more simply, and that they, they appropriately are, reflect this, the issues of scalability and proportionality for those who are not in the LCE standards. Our next area of focus is audit evidence. And we're taking a comprehensive look at the existing audit evidence standard to see if it provides a good umbrella framework for all the audit evidence requirements that exist throughout uh, ISAs. One area of particular note is the impact of technology in the gathering of audit evidence, and that will be a key component of this project. The next area I'd like to focus on is ESG or sustainability assurance. There's not a day that goes by, and I no note that this is a topic of, of, of to some extent of of this, this forum that I'm speaking to today, that people don't ask what the IAASB is doing on sustainability assurance. And I just wanna remind you that we as a board have a significant platform already relevant for ESG and sustainability reporting. Last year, we issued a staff alert following on Nick Anderson's IAA IASB article where the IAASB highlights the auditor's consideration of climate related risk in an audit of financial statements. The next thing I just say on other ESG related engagements, we have an umbrella standard that is already widely used globally, ISA 8000, and a specific standard on greenhouse gas emissions, ISA 3410. Last year, we published guidance for practitioners in the application of ISA 3000 to ESG and other related engagements. And our evidence for the field is that it has proved widely helpful for those who are undertaking a sustainability or ESG engagement. But we know our work is not done. And our work plan that we're about to finalize will note the following that we will, as a board, devote significant time and resources to ESG and sustainability assurance going forward. That we will partner with key players in developing future standards. We don't intend to go at this alone. And finally, we will act quickly to meet growing demand without preconceived outcomes. I personally believe that assurance of ESG reporting and other sustainability reporting is essential for trust in the markets. But we believe a global approach building off our existing platform should be a logical starting point. And it would be a real missed opportunity if national and regional jurisdictions went their own way. So we encourage you to support our efforts to gather global support for global assured solutions based upon ISA 3000 and our future work. Please speak up in this regard for us. Let me conclude just by saying that I believe the audit and insurance profession is 
absolutely vital for our economies around the world to work properly. We need you to participate and we need you to help us in the faithful implementation of our standards. There's a lot of work still to be done and keeping global confidence in the profession is a continuing work in progress, but we will be there to work with you in that effort. Thank you.